Hi guys, uh, welcome back to Filter Coffee Football. Uh, we are here to discuss uh, Arsenal's performance today, uh, post match after the Chelsea result, uh, two nothing. Um, quite uh, not unexpected, but still hits you hard when a result like that comes in. Uh, so we're just going to sit down and quickly discuss what was good, what was bad, what was horrendous about the result. Uh, but before we get into that, please uh, like, share, subscribe. Uh, give us all the feedback that you can help us make this content better. And uh, yeah, before, uh, without further ado, uh, Karthik, tell me, uh, to Chelsea, Arsenal, nil. What, what did you see in this match? Uh, I saw football, which was not interesting, first of all. I'm, I'm trying to compose my thoughts here and not go full angry or go full blow on why this was so stagnating or frustrating to watch at least. Uh, the game was just moving in parts. We were intense only for a sporadic amount of time. And that too, in a, in a couple of sequences. I mean, you could never say that we had that bite in us to like fight for the entire 90. The starting 10 minutes of the first half were like nice. But then, as soon as they scored the first goal, we were deflated. We just languished through till halftime. And the exact same thing in the second half. Although the second half was much better in terms of us playing out, having more shots on target. Shots and shots on target, both. <laughs> because both are like comparatively low, right? Yeah. So, that was nice. A couple of contentious decisions here and there maybe. But again... Referees and Arsenal, not not something that's going to work out ever. So, I'm not even going to that point where I'm going to finger point at a referee. Because our performance was frankly difficult to measure. Yeah, yeah, so, I agree. I agree. And uh, we will get to the, uh, the, the, the referee point a little bit later on. But uh, I get what you're saying. We had... We had some moments of like aggression, grit, where you were like, okay, that's good. The, players are showing some spirit, they're showing some sort of drive to try and get a result from this match. Um, but at no point was it was it evident in the final third. Um, the shots that we did get on target were quite frankly quite pitiful. Like Mendy had to make like one amazing save, which was the which was the Saka shot from outside the box. Um, outside of that, I think he had a very, very comfortable game. The defense had a very comfortable game. I mean, I mean the chances that we did create were chances that any big club expect to to concede in a in a 90 minutes like unless you're like an absolute absolute on song team even the best teams are, are going to give you like a half chance here and there in a game and unfortunately outside of the holding chance which i felt like he really really should have scored because he had a lot of space in there uh i think those those were the kind of chances that we made like chances that almost any other team would get in a match just as part of being uh just as part of the process um but yeah uh let, let's jump into some stats for this match um i mean when you look at the numbers you're kind of just blown out of the water 65 percent possession for chelsea throughout the match um they had 22 shots on goal five on target we had a very very measly six shots on target um we picked up cards for aggression. We were trying to kind of get those players down. We were trying to block their runners. I mean, they they just had everything going for them from really the kickoff all the way through to the end. Uh, even in the second half, when they did seem to uh, back off a little, they still held on to the ball uh, quite a lot. Uh, what stats stood out to you the most in this match? No. Oh. First stat that obviously stood out was shots on target. And I mean, just not even shots on target, number of shots that we took with such a huge disparity, it definitely tells you that you aren't really creating enough chances or spaces for players to even attempt a shot, let alone be on target. So you're stimmied there. They've stifled you so bad that you can't do anything. All you do is like circle around, passes sideways, pa ball goes behind, back to the keeper, keeper to right back. 
a hoof ball you lose possession the same thing over again and then we were trying to overload our left flank which backfired massively because that was the side where even Reece James was operating in for them the right yep. and Tierney was getting dragged into those half spaces because he was tracking the runner and he had to like manage Pablo Mari if he could not take on the attacker so that left a huge pocket of space in the left on our left flank for mm -hmm. them to exploit and exploit they did look at those two goals yeah i mean uh half of our attacks were down the left and uh only 40 percent of their attacks were down the left down their right which is our left uh uh which seems like we did go ahead more on that side but we didn't really create anything in the final third whereas both their goals came from from their right hand side uh I, I right at the start, I mean, we had this conversation uh, before the match discussing what kind of tactics Arteta should have employed. And uh, like we, we discussed, he probably should have stuck with the three at the back system to give the defense a little bit more security and give Tierney a little bit more flexibility uh, to either be as a left wing back or at least be a left centre back so that he can do one or the other. Or role. the other. Uh, he was stuck in no man's land today. I mean... Pablo Marie, uh, another really, really bad performance. No aerial duels won. In fact, uh, only one of our de starting defenders holding even got in the air and actually won a ball in the air. And none of our other defenders even contested or won a ball in the air, which is just horrible, uh, especially against a team that, that has the likes of Lukaku, who you know is going to get up in the air and try and fight for headers. Um, so yeah, f for me, the the worst, I mean, I can't agree more with you when it comes to the the shots. I mean, six shots is, you're not going to create anything in six shots. Uh, and uh, for me, the other part was just the possession. I mean, we're playing at home, we're playing at the Emirates and we see 35% of the ball. It, and, and Arsenal is supposed to want to play a possession-based Right. system and possession based style and seeing that little of the ball i mean you're not surprised when the result comes out the way it is when uh, th when those are the stats that that you're looking at right um going going over from the stats to the actual result uh the goals lukaku i mean we knew going in he was going to be <laughs> we knew going in he was going to be trouble and i mean he just waltzed past Pablo Murray. Pablo Murray was like dust in the wind next to him for that first goal. He just disappeared uh, for a very, very easy uh, tap-in. Uh, again, Tierney not able to get back in time to cover the, the overlap run by Reese James. And um, yeah, just a very bad goal to concede. Poor defending. And uh, excellent positioning by uh, an amazingly skilled striker. Uh, like we mentioned in our earlier podcast, right, that he has got a point to prove in the Premier League. That's why he's back after a long time out. And it shows, right? It shows the difference in quality where your striker is right at the box, right at where you want to be at the right time. He's already sniffing for opportunities. He just had to be there in the box. And there he was. He got his chance. He's finished the goal. Mm -hmm. He scored it. Would you say the same about a uh, Martinelli or a Pepe or an Aubameyang? I don't think so. Not in this game at least. Yeah, and I mean, he could have had two if not for uh, the, and the amazing save that Leno pulled out of, out of nowhere. Uh, wow, that I mean, I was convinced I was going to be three. You could see that pass coming from a mile away. I mean, I was watching and I was like, there was almost like three to four seconds. And I knew like, that's the run, that's the pass coming in. And I, I'm pretty sure Marie being a professional, he probably saw it coming too, but he could do nothing about it. I mean, that, that just says how poor the defending was today. So... Now that we've understood that our defense was poor, uh, <laughs> let's also acknowledge the fact that, okay, our team has been hit by injuries, has been hit by illness, COVID, as suspected. 
is also the case for Ben White missing today's game, mm-hmm. which was earned by the club. By the club, you also had other starters missing, right? I mean, what did you get Odegaard for? Odegaard was to be your attacking link channel, and he couldn't play today because of visa regulations and things like that. Yep. Fair enough. But then you still didn't have Thomas Partey, you still didn't have Alex Lacazette, and no Gabriel either. So that's like technically four first team players not playing, not even in the squad. It just deflates your morale, right? Yeah. And with and you're right where it's like that is an excuse to hide behind. But I feel then that as a manager you should tactically try and compensate for it. Like why would you play a four at the back? when you know you don't have your best defensive players playing, you don't have a screen like Thomas Partey playing and you don't have possibly your best player in the air and the most physical player, at least in your defense, in Gabriel, not available, why wouldn't you show that back line more um, against a team that you clearly know is very, very good in the attack? So uh, I guess it's, it's an excuse. It's... A legitimate excuse but as a manager i think you need to have the flexibility especially if you're managing a club like arsenal you need to have the flexibility to do uh, to adapt to a situation like that i, I wouldn't i i don't i i i, I was kind of miffed at, with him using that as as a crutch in the post match um so i think he should have he should have done better he should i mean he should have tried to support the players more given them more um confidence and giving them more belief in the system because once the first goal went in you could just see the players just losing complete faith um but yeah uh one player that just does not seem to give up and he didn't have the best of games today but he did create he did make mendy work and uh he did have one very contentious decision go against him uh what did you think about the penalty call uh so it's one, I think it's a contentious call. Uh, the referee clearly decided that it's not a penalty. It went to VAR, that itself is a big thing. Now, after it goes to VAR, VAR, I mean, you you and I both saw the replays, right? Mm-hmm. You could see that, uh, who was it who fouled Saka in the first place? James. Reasons. James. Yeah. So, you could see that his leg catches Saka's trailing leg. Now, technically, how though are those actual penalties, are those actual fouls versus you trying to block the player and that's when the penalty goes. So, there are two of these things. But in the case of Arsenal, as you've seen earlier too, decisions rarely go our way. So, I was not really first over not getting that penalty because we were never going to get it. Unless it was the other way around, we would have considered that penalty. (laughs) But for sure, we are not getting that penalty. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it was was definitely a a natural coming together. It wasn't, there was not any malice in the tackle. And uh, I think it was like, it was one of those decisions where if the referee would have given it as a penalty, VAR would not have overturned it. And because the referee didn't give it as a penalty, VAR chose to, to chose to respect that decision. It was kind of right, right in the middle there. 50, 50. So yeah, and uh, again, I, I'm not a big fan of using decisions not going your way as as a means to get out of a result. We should have done much better than we did. That that's just that's just the case. Um, and then uh, we did come really close with the Rob holding chance as well. I I think he he had a decent game. But any defender that concedes uh, two goals cannot cannot afford to um, have. I mean, there's only so many good things you can say about that. But I think he did have a decent game. Very close close call on that header. Maybe would have changed the game complexion a little bit if he did get that goal. And uh, but yeah, I mean, finally, w- what are your thoughts uh, to kind of sum up this game and kind of going into the next week facing <laughs> uh, facing up against Manchester City? So, it does give rise to the possibility that we will not have any points on the board after three games. That's what I feel. Final thoughts. What What would your advice, if, if you could give one advice to Mikel Atara, what is that going to be? Play according to the players that you have. Not play your system. I understand you want to implement 
and imprint your mark on the team on the side on the club whoever you want to but play to your player strengths that's all i'll ask for yeah no i completely agree he he definitely needs to try and uh, rethink his his approach he needs to think more about what people he has uh but yeah let's let's end on a lighter note uh, <laughs> talking talking about uh, mohammed uh, gusuf kaya i think that's that's uh that's his uh, name gumus kaya mohammed gumus kaya fenerbahce yes uh, he scored a goal uh, <laughs> in their last fixture and there's a funny video of him trying to find the crest on uh, their new puma jersey See? and uh, <laughs> mine it's your <laughs> uh oh my god what is wrong with these what is wrong with these jerseys i think there are like six or seven of them lots of teams city has a jersey uh, from the exact same model i think dortmund has one too and a couple of clubs uh, in syria has that too wow i'm sure <laughs> i'm sure i could find an editor on twitter who would make a better kit just for one meal a day just for like <laughs> paying off one single meal of his he might make a kit that i could use for my team with for like 10 seasons out throughout yeah they're And definitely going to the bottom, bottom of the barrel this time around we've seen some really really horrendous kits this season it's a hilarious video so uh, if you haven't seen it definitely uh, go ahead and catch that it'll brighten up your day Uh, but yeah that's that's it for today uh, again please like share comment and uh, subscribe help us build the channel help us improve as as much as you can because it will be really really meaningful to us and yeah this is us signing off akshay and karthik hope you guys have a great rest of the weekend and a great weekend yeah yeah the kid the <laughs> that's it all ready see ya <laughs>